Chris Rain, and you're listening to The MBS Show. Hello and welcome to The MBS Show, episode number 50. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Daniel Anthony. Hey, Norman. Happy Chinese New Year. Happy Chinese New Year to you too, Dan. So, um, you sound a bit far off, way beyond yonder. Where are you? Oh, well, I'm in the middle of um, somewhere down south. Uh, not really south as far as you, but still somewhere between there helping someone decorate for their wedding. Oh, okay. So, basically, the you're... The car is my new studio. Ah, you're in the car and you're on your iPad then? Yeah. All right, then. And joining us as guest host for this week is Rebecca Starborn. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi, Rebecca. Welcome how are back, you? Rebecca. Thank you. So, how are you? Uh... Busy as all get up, but I'm doing well. How about y'all? Ah, uh, derpiest episode ever. <laughs> it's hot. It's really hot. Uh, it's cold for me, man. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but honestly... I'm nearer to the equator. <laughs> We're all near... Oh, let's move on. So before we move on, uh, Rebecca, favorite pony and favorite episode? Uh, favorite pony is going to be Forest Rain. Okay. Favorite episode... Best answer ever. <laughs> uh, favorite episode is, is uh, still, you know, that one. The last round up? I remember the name of. The last round up. Yeah, there we go. Okay, awesome, awesome. So moving on to our next seat is the guest seat. And in that guest seat, we got Forrest Rain. Hi. Hi, Forrest. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Uh, we're doing awesome. So, <laughs> a surprise to be on? Surprise? Uh, not really. One of those things. You were <laughs> expecting us? I, well, uh, Rebecca let me know that I was going to be on. So, it's it's not one of those, hey, we're running a show. Can you come on in like five minutes kind of deals? It was actually like, a, oh, hey, these guys want to interview you in like a week kind of deals. And it's like, oh, okay. Actually, there was a little bit of a surprise, though, because earlier... Um, She's like, oh, yeah, by the way, in, like, one hour, we have that interview. And I'm like, oh, right, yeah, okay, that. I completely forgot. Oh, so it's, yeah, it's, it's a quasi-surprise. Like, like, yeah. Okay. I mean, are you surprised that we're, like, on the other side of the world and suddenly asking you on? Oh, that. Well, pff, no, it's it's a global world now. Everybody does everything. It's like, it's, yeah, we're... There's, there's people that send me letters for stuff all over the place, so I'm never surprised if there's people, you know, contacting me from, like, New Zealand or Australia or Malaysia or so. That part of it doesn't really surprise me too much. Yeah, everything's, okay. everything's linked by internet. No internet meaning you're not in the modern age. Thanks, yeah. Celestia, for the internet. <laughs> uh, so anyway, Forrest, before we move on... I need to ask you the four important questions. And question number one is, who is your favorite pony? My favorite pony has to be Starborn. Uh-huh. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, this is full of refer- win. So <laughs> full of win. <laughs> if, if you're referring to show characters, then Derby. But like that's, that's, that's true for both of us, I think. Yep. I think oh. that's understood. We didn't really need to ask. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, um, what is your favorite episode? I actually, I was looking at this earlier, and I don't really have a favorite episode. Um, there's a bunch of episodes I like, and I mean, like, the last roundup is among them, but so is Luna Eclipsed, or um, uh, Lesson Zero, stuff like that. But it, So there's a bunch of them, and they're all kind of around the same, you know, likability, I guess. So there's no particular favorite for me. Okay, okay, so any memorable? Actually, like the previous episode, like the one that just came out this week, that was pretty good too. Games Pony's Play? Yeah. That is a good one. I haven't watched that yet. Are we going to spoil it for you, son? <laughs> ah, here we go again. <laughs> yes, yes. So anyway, um, how did you become a fan of the show? Uh, how did I become a fan? Um, actually, I was um, working as a cable guy. And while I was in my truck, um, I was tuned into uh, national radio that we have here in Canada uh, called the CBC. And um, on the radio, there is uh, a program called Q with Shion Gomeshi. And he does uh, interviews and does a lot of stuff with like musical artists and stuff. But 
Um, he had uh, somebody on to talk about this phenomenon called bronies, which uh, previous to that show, I don't think pretty much anybody in Canada really heard of um, My Little Pony, uh, the, the new, uh, the new Rendition? like Generation 4. Yeah. yeah. Um, and because um, we didn't have it for like at least a year after uh, the States did. Um, but he uh, he was talking about um, uh, how's the, how there's this phenomenon called bronies and how it was coming up. So I kind of made sure that I was in the truck to listen to it at the time because it sounded like something that would be interesting. Um, and um, when they when they said that it was like this cartoon for little girls um, that like teenage and uh, guys in their twenties are getting into, I'm like, well, this sounds exactly like something I would love to get into. Um, so I listened to a little bit of the interview, at least as much as I could while I was, you know, just kind of like driving around in between jobs and, um, like they played the theme for it and they, they were talking about how it's kind of started on 4chan and migrated over and, um, a lot of people started picking up on it. And I'm like, yeah, this sounds like something I should check out. Um, so that night I went home and I downloaded all of season one and I watched probably half of it that night and loved it. Oh, okay, so this was around mid two thousand eleven or twelve. Uh, actually, this would be uh, December of twenty twelve. Ah, that's last. No, sorry, okay. December of twenty eleven. Sorry. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, no, not that recently. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, so I made pony music before I ever heard of the show. No. Um, <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, it'd be it's December like, twenty eleven. Oh my god, there's a character named Derpy in the show. It looks exactly like the one I was thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boys. Yeah. yeah, so December of 2011, to be completely clear. So you were so you were in the 2011-2012 lull then, where there were no ponies? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was. So um, what do your family and friends think about your love for the show? Good question. Um, my family, like, knows about it. They don't really, like, have opinions one way or the other. Um, really like they're just happy that I'm doing stuff and that people are noticing, um, like the work that I do. Um, and you know, they're happy every time that I do like some sort of community project or something like that. Um, I told them about the stuff that we did with Bronies for Good and, and, and all that stuff too. And they're, they're really, you know, uh, I guess kind of proud about that. Um, but so far as like opinions or judgments, there's, there's none of that really. Oh. Um, Friends, uh, like, I don't really talk to that many of my friends outside of the pony community. Um, the ones that I do are, you know, perfectly accepting. It's like, so they don't, again, they don't really think one way or the other about it. Um, my best friend is happy for the stuff that I was able to do with it, but he refuses to watch the show. Uh, oh. I, mean, I think I made him watch maybe one or two episodes, uh, like one night or something like that, but he, he didn't watch anything beyond that. Okay, it's cool then. Uh, your brainwashing skills are not strong enough. Never mind. We'll, <laughs> with with a bit, with a bit soon, of Norman, soon. with a bit more um, adult beverages, it may it might help. It might help. No, I tried it. I tried it. Believe me. Um, That's how adult beverages. Also got roped in. <laughs> I have to say though, adult <laughs> beverages really do help the show, um, especially if like you have like you know a forty fifty inch TV. And you're like maybe two or three adult beverages in, and uh, this this happened to me actually. I was I was a few more than two or three in the one night, and I was watching uh, watching some of the shows from I, I guess some of the episodes from season two, um, in like full 1080p. And I remember saying to my roommate that night, uh, like I was just sitting in front of the TV staring at it, I'm like, hey, it's in 3D. <laughs> Look at it. It looks so amazing. Oh boy! And it, like literally, it felt that way. Like I was looking at it, just full in 1080 1080p on a 120 hertz TV. I'm just like, wow, this looks really good. 180p does look good. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, Forrest, for that really interesting answer. <laughs> no problem. And let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is housekeeping. The MBS show will be holding its first anniversary meetup. The meetup is going to be on February 23rd at The Curve. And the meetup will start at 12 noon. Come and join and get the chance to meet the hosts of the MBS show like me, Daniel Anthony and Charlie. 
And we'll be having guest appearances from the creator of the Malaysian Brony Society, Hazi herself, local Brony musician Meals. Joining us is also local Brony artist Vincent Fang, and of course, the local Brony athlete, the one who has quite a sparkle on his bicycle, Mel Hilton. So stay tuned to next week's episode for more announcements, as well as details about how to meet up. And that was housekeeping. I hope you guys can make it. And moving on, well, this is a new one for us. Guest host talk. So, Rebecca, we heard that you're hosting Cloudsdale Congress. Uh, I am the co-chair of Cloudsdale Congress, yes. Oh, co-chair. Awesome. So, when is Cloudsdale Congress? I cannot say that word. When is Cloudsdale (laughs) Congress? Yes, okay. When is it? Uh, Cloudsdale Congress is March 9th and 10th. So, exactly a month from today, actually. Forest Rain is now 100%. Confirmed for performing there, and uh, so am I, actually. Awesome. <laughs> so, are you performing together? Uh, yes. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, mind hyping Cloudsdale Congress for us? Well, our biggest announcement is um, we got uh, Lee Tokar, the voice of uh, somebody. Stephen Magnet <laughs> and. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Snips. Uh, Yes, Stephen Magnet, um, Gary Chalk, who is one of the Diamond Dogs, and uh, Michael Dangerfield, who is the voice of Brayburn. Uh, we still have more guests in the works, so we'll see who comes through there. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, like I said, that's our biggest news right now. We're doing really well. We had a super successful Kickstarter. We actually ended up making almost a thousand dollars over our original goal. Oh, awesome! So, what what is the Kickstarter all about? Well, the Kickstarter was just about making the convention better for everybody. Mm. Um, you know, we we have a convention that is focused on the underdogs, the people who aren't really well known within the fandom, but still do what they do because they love doing it. We just want to give those people a chance to take center stage and be the focus of the community. You know, give them their time to shine, which is why we got the lesser-known voice actors. Well, I mean, Lee Tokar, well, he's, you know, just famous for going to cons, more <laughs> or less. But, you know, people like Fido, the dog, who, you know, who's seen him out in public. Yeah, I mean, technically he's unknown in the Brony community because I was wondering who voices um, the Diamond Dogs. <laughs> now I know. <laughs> So, um, I noticed that you also had a band camp for the Cloudsdale Congress album? Uh, yes, yes. We had um, a slew of awesome musicians to include Forest Rain. Uh, we all created tracks for this um, Party in the Clouds album uh, with the intent of raising money to bring in more musicians. Oh, okay, so how many tracks are they on the album? Oh, God, how many were there? There were, like, 20, 23, I think. If I remember right, 19, maybe, right? That that could also totally be correct. I'm trying to look at it right now, and I forgot where I put it. Uh, could be my PC. Yeah, here, it's right there. Uh, 19 sounds correct. It's 19. <laughs> oh, okay, there it is. Mm. So, Cloudsdale Congress parties in the cloud. So, I've noticed that you got a lot of... Well, um, to me, they are big names, but I'm not sure about the general Brony community. Um, would you say they're big? I guess it just kind of depends. Like some of these people on the album, like um, you know, Omni Pony and Silver Hound, um, are really well known. And then we have some of the smaller names, like DJ Hollow Point, uh, myself, and uh, Electro Complosion. And uh, most of those most of those people are actually local to the DC area where the convention is being hosted. Yeah, and I see Kokoneru here somewhere. I, I noticed him. Where did he go? Okay, there he is on track number eight. <laughs> so I noticed here that you didn't set a price. Why is that? Uh, correct. We wanted to make the album free to the people who wanted it but couldn't afford it. Uh, but at the same time, we wanted to offer uh, the option to make donations for anybody who really enjoyed the, the music and wanted to pay for it and help us get musicians out and to the convention. Oh, I see. So 100% of 
all the proceeds go to getting those musicians to Clouds Digital Congress? That's absolutely correct. And actually, most of the local musicians, uh, uh, I I have um, Electric Explosion and Coco Nehru. Just anybody who lives in the immediate area has actually like opted out of the profit sharing so that the people who don't need the money to travel can pass it along to the other people who live farther away. And all of these people are United States locals, right? Uh, no. No, they're not. Oh, really? No. Four strands from Canada. Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, other than him? Other than him, I'm not totally sure. Um, I think Silverhound is coming from further away than Forrest, despite living in the same country. Oh my, so you got um, the Northern Americans coming and n- no, nobody from Europe? Not as far as I know, I don't think so. So, the album is for getting the artists to Klaus and Congress. So, how long will the event be or the con be? Uh, the con is, I guess technically it's one and a half days. Um, I mean, we have pre-reg on Friday. Um, the con, the majority of the convention takes place on Saturday. And on Sunday, um, you know, we have uh, a little bit of stuff going on in the morning. Uh, we'll have closing ceremonies. And then we've actually organized it so that, um, our local DC Bronies group is going to just take, uh, convention goers away from the venue and out and around dc oh so um, they'll be playing um so they'll be playing um tourist guide yeah basically um you know we have a lot of people coming in who have never seen washington dc and it's like the capital of the united states so it's big and fancy or whatever <laughs> um i love how excited you are about that great now i want to go <laughs> Look, man, it's it's cold out there, and <laughs> I don't like cold things. It's not going to be that cold in March. But right at this second right now, I would like to just... That's fine. Right. We can trade places. I can warm up, and you can freeze. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Oh, boys. So, um, after the con's done, you'll be playing tour guide for the people who wants to walk around Washington, D.C. That's awesome. Yep, for those that don't know, like, the DC Bronies group itself is, uh, we're a little over 500 members strong right now, so we have we have plenty of people who know the area. Oh, awesome, awesome. And I'm guessing from all walks of life? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Even more awesome. Wow. Anyway, that was Cloudsdale's Congress, so it'll start on March the 10th? March 9th. March 9th to the 10th. Am I right? Uh, it, it was one day from today, but now, now it's the... 10th here in the States. Really? Oh, yeah. We've officially ten- changed days while we've been talking. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. Talk about time traveling. <laughs> so it's, let's just say it's a month from now. Yep. Thereabouts. Awesome, awesome. I wish you success and I hope to hear great things about Cloud Today Congress. Thank you. And I hope it goes well myself. Awesome. Anyway, let's get into news time. And in today's news time... Enterplay's new collector's item. Enterplay, the creators of the My Little Pony trading card, has released a new collector's item. The collector's item is a new looking derpy tin. The tin will include an exclusive trading card, also some random cards from the set. Expect to see this collector's item at Hot Topic stores on March 20th. I seen the tin and I so want it. I just want the card. You don't want the tin? I have a, I have a vinyl scratch See, tin. I really like We it. have a win-win situation. Norman wants the tin for us, wants the card. I, I wonder. Are we going here? <laughs> no, I want, the, I want the card too, man, because it, it, it's an exclusive. From what I understand, it could be a derpy exclusive. Uh, yes, it is. And it's uh, the card number is F43. And when I take a look online to look at um, what is F43... Uh, they haven't printed out yet, so it's something new. Um, okay, so actually, if you take a look at any of the posters included with, um, like, the vinyl scratch box or the Pinkie Pie box, they include a picture of F43, and it is, in fact, derpy. Oh, you mean uh, her posing? Because I remember seeing something like that. 
Uh, yeah, um, actually, if you've seen the poster that was released, um, the derpy poster from, um... Comic-Con? Oh. Yeah, from Comic-Con. Yeah. Uh, it is, um, it's, it's basically just a scaled down version of that poster. I so much want. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, unfortunately the card still remains untitled. It is cool, man. Uh, all those people who wants her to be Derpy Hooves can do so. And all those people who wants her to be named Ditsy Do can do so. Ditsy <laughs> Or Derpy Do or... Ditsy hooves. I mean, it, it's all it's all workable. It's all workable. So I prefer to call her best pony. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> who is best pony? Best pony is best pony. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I'm excited for the tin, and once it comes out to hot topic, I might buy it. <laughs> so, Just like shipping all the way here cost a bomb. Don't care. Must get derpy. Oh uh, boy. So anyway, let's move on to the next topic before I murder someone. So, um, Dan, can you read the show notes? Ladies and gentlemen, Season 4 has been confirmed. Season 4 of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic has been announced technically, and recently, Daniel Ingram, the songwriter for MLP FIM, has posted up his credits to things he has worked on on his website. And the most interesting he has worked on, of course, without a doubt, is My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. In his musical credits, he wrote down Seasons 1 to 4, 91 times 22 minute episodes, meaning that he's worked on 91 episodes. If you all know some basic maths, season 3 will end with 65 episodes in total, and according to Daniel Ingram's resume, he will work on 91. With a bit of magic, that works out to 26 episodes. It means that season 4 is going to be a 26 episode season. Links can be found in the show notes, as well as a picture of Daniel Ingram's little snippet from his resume. So guys, excited for 26, um, sorry, um, yeah, 26 episodes of season 4? Totally. I can't wait for it. Like, I'm wondering, what could they do? What's the story about? Applejack becomes an alicorn. Win. <laughs> Automatically <Derby> win. <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's like two weeks from now. <laughs> and they can all become alicorns, but Pinky's going to be the princess. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I still hope that when, when the Twy becomes an alicorn thing came out, uh, Starborn said something to me that I really enjoyed, <laughs> which was like, like Derpy goes and crashes the the coronation ceremony and accidentally becomes the alicorn instead. <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> oh boy, that's gonna be awesome. <laughs> uh, so everybody's excited for season four then. Um, oh yeah, of course. Something's not in here that I should mention that they're doing a TV movie special. Um, any thoughts on it? I I heard about it, but don't know anything about it. Yeah. Mm, it could be, well, my theory is um, the movie is going to downgrade Twilight into an unicorn again. <laughs> could be. <laughs> like, oh my goodness, Twilight Sparkle's OP, man. We need to gimp her. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's something like going to follow the story of Journey of the Spark, where she actually goes way lower than just unicorn. <laughs> Uh, I Speaking of Journey of the Spark, since you've heard of that, you're, you're referring to the fan-made movie, right? Uh, I know quite a few. Okay. My Little Dashi, Journey of the Spark, Rise of the Galax. Yeah. For um, My Little Pony, Journey of the Spark, that's actually a movie that I'm working on. Um, I'm doing oh. the songwriting for it. Ooh, awesome. Well, let's just keep that for your interview. Yep. Sure. Okay, so let's move on so we can get to that interview. Um... Main 6 got CND from Hasbro. Recently, the no! main... Oh, you mean yes? It's my oh. voice. <laughs> okay, anyway, recently, the main 6 team got a cease and desist letter from Hasbro's lawyer. The team have stopped all of their works and taken down all of their contents from their website. They are currently attempting negotiations with Hasbro for the continued use of their properties in their non-profit volunteer, voluntary project. As for now, they have not received any answer from Hasbro yet, so we may have to wait for a while. Links can be found in the show notes. So, the most exciting game from the Brony fandom has been CND. What do we all think? Because I'm a bit pissed off right now. I what? suggested that they switch to the upheaval characters. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be good. But, um, one that? thing... 
One thing that's not written in the show notes is that Main Six was contacted directly by Lauren Faust. Oh, yes, that one. But that is more or less of a uh, I'm sorry to hear that kind of story, right? Uh, well, Lauren basically sent them a thing on Twitter that said, hey, did you want some original characters to continue development for your game? Oh. And uh, somebody asked if it was um, going to be like pony characters. She's like, no, it's going to be completely original characters. Oh. Uh, That's awesome. I was hoping for like Peach Bible ponies. Can't. Still under the show. You know why I want the Peach Bible ponies. No, can't. Still <laughs> under the show. But you know... I'm saying you do know why. <laughs> I'm not going to say the name because I know what's going to happen. <laughs> I learned my lesson, man. But anyway, um, if the main six team wanted to do something, why not do my little brony fighting his magic? See what I'm getting here? They can use fan fan work like um Rebecca like Starborn. Rain. Yeah. Or Forest Rain. That'll be awesome. Well, they already incorporated some some musician OCs into it. Like I think they had Glaze and Mike and stuff. I don't and Tombstone. Think so, right? They, they should put Jack they should put Jack in there, you know. Can't <laughs> she has um she has um Griffin. Nah she, she has uh, there's a lot of things that they can't do, man. Uh Better work with fan works like, um, let's just say, Alpha and Five Iron, Brony. They could work Thank in the you. game. I'm not going to put myself in, man. I don't want to get beaten up. <laughs> but it's it's all sad news, man. Like, this was a game that I'm looking forward to playing. Even Daniel Ingram himself was looking forward to it. Yep, yep. And also some of my non-pony loving friends wanted to play it. Uh, what about you guys? You've been quiet. <laughs> I, 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 was, I was really looking forward to it as well. It's a game. It doesn't really bother me terribly much. I mean, I tried the, the leak when it came out. I gave it a try. Played it with a couple people. It was fun for like all of five minutes and then I got bored. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not a big fighting game fan, eh? No, not really. Uh, I really, I'm just like a button masher when it comes to that. Same <laughs> oh. <laughs> here. <laughs> oh, it's okay then. So anyway, um, l- let's move on from that set piece of news to something much more cheerful. And it's Season 3 Reviews. Well, on this episode, we review Season 3, Episode 12, Games Ponies Play. Um, listen to us, give our opinion and thoughts on this episode. So guys, who here has seen the episode? Yep. We have, yep. <laughs> okay, nope. cool. So, so Dan, um, you haven't, right? Nope. Oh. Spoiled. oh yes. Um, okay, so Just mute your ears. Yeah, mute your ears. So, um, Rebecca, you want to start talking about it because I could do it, but my conversation always lasts for twenty minutes long. <laughs> First of all, I just want to say, like, green-haired pony was like adorable. I loved her for absolutely no reason. What was you her, liked her name? Because she had a southern accent. That's Probably it. <laughs> and she's claustrophobic, uh, right? Yeah. So, like, I, I actually, I think I might like her because I love apple fritter, and there's never been enough apple fritter in the show. So she's like an okay substitute or whatever. Yeah, she has a chicken cutie mark. <laughs> that, it says a lot of what she does for work. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, she processes scootaloo. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> oh god, yes! <laughs> uh. And um, starting off, we get to see Philly Rainbow Dash. So cute! And her dad! Could be brother, because it looks he looks younger. I don't know, could be dad or could be brother. Who knows? Yeah. The, uh. the, the whole fandom is saying... We just kind of assume dad, I guess. Yeah. You know? I don't know, the Rainbow's dad is always going to be like the Rainbow's dad from Rainbow Dash Presents. <laughs> With a <me> mustache. <laughs> the bat who lives. <laughs> oh, not that one. Oh, that's a bad one. That's a bad dad. That was amazing. <laughs> yes, yeah, true, amazing, but yet yeah, still a lousy father for a monkey. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, looking at little Feely Rainbow Dasher, uh, she looks cute. Yeah. Well, I mean, we saw her back in, like, season one, too, so it's not anything new. Yeah, but the pose and 
the rest of the stuff and I, I don't think they changed her voice, right? It sounded the same to me. Yeah, I, well, I, I didn't pay that close attention to it, actually. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was an enjoyable episode. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I, like, there wasn't, it, it, there wasn't any, like, big plot points in it or anything, really. But it had everything that, like, I would come to expect from an MLP episode. Yeah, true. And I, I, what I like about this episode is how they did the um, crossover for episode number 11. Mm-hmm. So, I yeah, mean, it's like the first time they've done that, I think. Yeah, I think uh, Megan McCartney said it was the first time that they <laughs> did something like this. And it was really awesome. Stubborn was just saying that she was like didn't figure it out until the end. Really? I had no idea. Really? No. <laughs> it, it was like in the front of the episode where... I just thought it started really, really similar to the last episode. <laughs> For a while, I thought we were we had accidentally like queued up the the eleventh episode again. <laughs> wow! Somebody and needs. I love to... my girlfriend because she's kind of derpy sometimes. Um, somebody needs to do a snippet of the whole show, like episode eleven and twelve back to back, and just split the difference on which episode crossover with which scene. Uh, that would I mean, be fun. Yeah, but... Yeah, on the train ride to the Crystal Empire, they practice cheering move, and it seems that Rarity was supposed to be in the pyramid, right? That's what you call it. Yeah. yeah. And um, one thing we learn from ponies is never practice cheering inside a moving train because they can stop <laughs> and randomly change your cutie mark. Oh no, not that, not now, soon. <laughs> I don't know. I, I have to enjoy this episode. It's basically... Um, I don't know how to say the lesson because I kind of get what they're trying to tell, but I don't... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know for? if it was really like a big moral thing at the end. It was really just more of an enjoyable episode, I guess. Uh, there, there is a moral, actually, because it's something about how if you try to pander to somebody too much, they'll... I don't know. I mean, it has something to do with that um, Inspector Pony, um, what's her name with the blonde mane? Let's just say I'm bad at giving um, lessons because I don't <laughs> learn a thing. And this is the most derpiest episode review ever. Yay! Drink cider, learn nothing. Indeed. <laughs> Let's just say that this episode is really awesome and um, you should go watch it with episode number 11, Back to Back. Or if you have the knowledge and know-how of how to split videos in scenes, do that. That's much more awesome. <laughs> there was, um, it's funny because there's a few people talking about how they didn't like the episode really? because they hated, hated awkward situations and stuff uh, like that. Awkward situations and, are funny. Yeah, well, like there wasn't really that many awkward situations in it, like... I mean, sure, it's kind of awkward, but, like, really, it's, it's they were just stalling for time for the majority of the episode, so... Yeah. That's, that's what happens when you do stall for time. Awkward situations always pop up. Like how I do my show. <laughs> There's always awkward silence, and I edit them out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, awkward silence in three, two, one. Half <laughs> <Half-tap. laughs> Yes, yeah. indeed. So, anyway, um... Episode review fail, I think. Let's move on to the much better thing to talk about. Guest time! And our guest is Forrest Rain. So, <laughs> Forrest, enjoying yourself? Absolutely. Awesome, awesome. I hope... Um, I want to say I hope we didn't derp that much, but I think you would enjoy that. So I'm going to ask you, um, <laughs> did we derp enough? Uh, there's, uh, there's a suitable level of derp so far. Uh, yeah. Okay, so, um... You can never have too much derp. Yeah. <laughs> so, Boris... But you don't have too little, little derp. Oh. Yes, that's true. True, true. I don't think I've ever had too little derp. Nope. Oh, boys. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, Boris, uh, mind introducing yourself to the people who might not know you and what you do? Uh, sure. My name is Forrest Rain. I am a brony musician. I do mostly pop, punk, alternative, and orchestral music. I also do some uh, community work, uh, community projects. I've worked in association with Ronies for Good for a couple projects. 
I did something called the Massive Smile Project back in near the beginning of 2012, which involves uh, a whole bunch of different brony musicians all coming together in one track uh, with a, a basically doing a cover of the the Smile song um, mm. that Pinky did. Um, and then had like a final choir of about 160 people that were all just people that submitted tracks on the internet, about a hundred, yeah, like I said, about 160 people that all just kind of submitted, um, vocal tracks for that at the end. I've also done songs like great to be different, which also had a community project where people sent in, uh, like photographs and videos and stuff of themselves. Uh, it debuted at Canterlot Gardens oh, awesome. um, last year. Yeah. So a few things. So I'm I'm looking at your YouTube playlist or YouTube uh, uploads, and I do notice that um, besides music, you also do fanfic reading. Uh, that's right. Yeah, I um, a big thing that I work on is a, a fan fiction called uh, Upheaval. Upheaval. Oh and, yes. Um, <laughs> it's still going, man. Uh, because the first upload was is. about a year ago. <laughs> yeah, I started actually. I probably uploaded my first upheaval right around when I was first doing my alternative music um, at the beginning of 2012. And uh, actually, it took all of 2012 for me to do the the 48 chapters of Upheaval Breaking Point. Um, and I think that totaled it out to a lot of hours. Um, I'm actually going to look it up real quick just so I can give you an exact amount. Um, but yeah, a lot of work went into... Um, uh, upheaval, uh, breaking point last year. And then I just, uh, I took a little bit of a hiatus, um, until 2013 to start upheaval reckoning, which is what I'm working on now. And, um, the, the author of the story is a, a great guy named Visiden Visidane, uh, who lives in the Philippines. Oh, awesome. And, and uh, yeah. Um, he, and he writes this, uh, really, really great story, which a lot of people would uh, compare to like fall at Equestria. Oh, really? Um, no. Yeah, so Breaking Point was 48 chapters, and uh, the, the actual fully produced uh, audiobook for that section of the story was 17 hours and 35 minutes. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so it's quite long. <laughs> and I, I don't think I can sit through one playthrough for 17 hours. <laughs> well, each chapter yeah. is about 20 minutes, so... Awesome, awesome. Well, um, twenty minutes break. Then it's like it's like the show. You you spend twenty two minutes of your life to watch a show, so you just have to spend twenty two minutes of your life listening to this fanfic reading. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and for people that have like long commutes or like really you know boring jobs and stuff like that, they 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 tell me that they they look forward to uh, getting a new chapter every week so that they have something to to do for at least twenty two minutes out of their day. They can be occupied. Yeah, sometimes commuting can be really a real chore, you know, it's so long. Sometimes you got to stand in the bus and stuff. <laughs> Indeed. So, um, Forrest, let's ask you some questions about... Give me a second, because I'm derpy that way. Okay, so, um, how did you get your name, Forrest Rain? <laughs> how did I get my name, Forrest Rain? I think I actually started working on uh, the design for my OC before I even came up with my name. And I pretty much designed exactly what my OC looks like now, except my OC's had a couple little revisions since uh, since I first created her. Uh, I came up with this this gray Pegasus that had a green mane, and I'm like, well, what am I going to name it? And um, I just kind of thought about things that I liked. I mean, like, I really enjoy nature. I enjoy being outside. I enjoy exploring and doing stuff like that. Um, and I love the sound of the rain Specifically, like, when you're in, in, like, a cabin or something like that, you hear it on the roof, just the sound of the rain. And that, like, the thought of being in a cabin and hearing the rain pouring down um, kind of made me think of, well, I like forests. I like rain. Forest rain. That works. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. That's pretty much how it came. It's just nothing terribly special. It was just that. And I'm like, well, that sounds great. It kind of really worked stinks. out. Yeah. So basically today when I um, just turned up this morning at my friend's wedding and then uh, there was a brony here and he asked me, oh, you're having a show this afternoon, who's on? And I said, Forrest Rain, and he's like, is that like Daniel Ingram's screen name or something? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I was like, uh, no, although he is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, uh, if you guys a song that made it to the show, that would be amazing. And I think that's what should happen. 
<laughs> well, thank you. Because, I mean, it was um, basically the song that touched me the most that you wrote was has to be great to be different because it was it was how actually I found Starborn's contact <laughs> oh, through <really>? the video. <laughs> that's how I found her contact. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, basic, basically, uh, I would like to ask a bit more about that. You know, I actually asked Starborn whether she wrote the same message on every single note. And actually, she didn't. So, you know, I need to ask you, what would have happened if you had found the note that said, I just don't know what went wrong? <laughs> well, if that was the case, I probably wouldn't have been as inspired as I was. I mean, like, the content of what was actually written on the note was a big thing as to, like, what touched me. If it had said anything else, I probably wouldn't have come up with that song. For the main fact that, the, you know, the, the letter said, it's great to be different, love Derby. And, like, that's exactly what inspired It's Great to be Different. It's those exact words. So, <laughs> yeah, if there was anything else written, it, 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 it would have never happened. And I would have never wrote the song, and I probably would have never found Becca. Wow, it's really something. Talk about luck and stuff. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, basically, aside from these kind of little things, do you draw your inspiration from music from anything else? Everything else, I guess. Is, I mean, can it be, be, like, as random as how you got your name and stuff? Yeah, no, for sure. Like, um, inspirations for music are all over the place. Uh, like, with Trixie, um, I, I went out and I just sat near a river on, like, um, a little hill near a river and I just kind of looked at nature and I was, was playing the guitar and and it just kind of came to me and whereas uh, stuff like I recently did a song that's not I guess not particularly pony related but it's called uh, Aishiteru um, which is Japanese for I Japanese love you Japanese for I love you yeah and the inspiration for that was like the feelings of first and foremost how it is to to kind of like leave your life behind and move to a brand new brand new place which I've done a few times like I, I Canada's a pretty big place and I moved out west I moved out east um, moving out west took me a week to drive out west for one so like it's quite a ways away I decided I wanted to just live out west for a little while um, and I was able to land a place for the summer so I just kind of moved out there and stayed for the summer and then came back afterwards and I mean it's it's quite a bit different living on the west coast than it is you know, um, I live in like mid mid east Canada, I guess is what you call it. Close to the east coast of the United States, but it's not the east coast of Canada at all. But yeah, the feelings of you know moving far away, uh, as well as like the feelings of um, you know moving to be with somebody you love, which I've done once, I guess. Uh, didn't really work out, but you know whatever. Um, and also like the feelings that I had with Starborn and. Um, the, the thoughts that I would have with how it would feel to, you know, just kind of drop everything and, and, and move down to be with her. Uh, and that all kind of got amalgamated into the one song. But yeah, the, the inspirations for songs are really eclectic. They, they can be for many things. They can be as, as, as dumb as, hey, I want to write a love song about Trixie for no reason because I'm sitting out by a riverbank and that's what comes to me. Or it can be, you know... Um, contacting uh, a good friend of mine and saying, hey, I'm you know, interested in writing this song or interested in doing something that sounds like this. And we just kind of both come up with, with something that would work for it, which is kind of how Hey, Ms. Derpy happened. Ah, right. I mean, your story is one that's very, very inspiring. And I'm part of a local choir here. And every time, you know, we got to share our touching stories about how music has touched our lives and stuff, we tend to, I tend to share about you too, actually. <laughs> Aw. About how it's like, Music can bridge boundaries. And then you hear all of them making these long speeches about music being the universal language of the world. And, okay, I agree with it, but some of these get really, really generic. Yeah. For me, kind of going on the, the top of, topic of music and how it touches people and how it can be used to, to communicate and stuff like that. For me, Great to be Different was a, an extremely personal song that didn't take long to write, but took yeah, a long one time. Night. Yeah, I, I did it in one night. I wrote it all in one night, and then I just edited it the next day, and that was it. The lyrics never changed after that, mostly because it was kind of like a story that just popped into my head. And ironically, 
that story kind of became reality in a way. And like I said, it was a really personal song, and it, it took me a long time to actually produce it because I wanted to make it as good as I possibly could. Even in the days after... BronyCon, I wanted to find the person that wrote the letter because I had no idea who it was. And I thought it might have been the person that did like the the big derpy, like full oh, body suit, fursuit. Yeah. Oh, right, that one. And that was Sophie Cabra. And I mean, like, I found her and I'm like, hey, did you write letters? And she's like, no, that wasn't me. But I did do the fursuit. I'm like, well, your fursuit was awesome, but I'm looking for somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, like, I had a couple of interviews in, like, the weeks uh, just after BronyCon, and I remember mentioning the letter and that I wanted to find the person that wrote it, but I never could. So I just kind of, you know, let that fall by the wayside for a while and worked as best I could on the music and trying to make it the best I possibly could. At one point, I wasn't sure if I was actually going to be able to do justice to it. Uh, and that's when I like brought in um, Cyril to get some um, Cyril the Wolf to to get uh-huh. some uh, critique on it and stuff like that. Um, and I also brought in Turquoise Splash to do uh, guitar part uh, guitar part for it. Um, and he actually brought a lot of soul to the song by by doing that guitar part. Like without that, it it kind of like loses a little bit of its its uh, emotion, I guess. Feel right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, the guitar was really, really powerful, and it was one of the few Brony songs out there that has actually moved me to tears. It has <laughs> happened, you know. And these things hit at the worst times. I was driving, and suddenly I started crying, and <laughs> I was wondering, "Oh, great, why now?" <laughs> because I, I listen to this song a lot. It's like it's something that really picked me up, as it, because before that it was the smile song, because mm-hmm. no one can frown after hearing that song. Yeah, and you know, once this came, once I heard of a uh, great to be different, and I downloaded it, it was, it just had something in it that reached out because it, it made me wonder, um, why does Derpy appeal to you so much? Because I know that um, your album's title is a life with Derpy. Yeah, and the funny thing about that was that uh, when I wrote Great to Be Different, like I was so inspired about that that I'm like, well, yeah, I I, I might work on this, uh, this um, I might work on this concept album called. Uh, a life with derpy and i was going to write a few other songs to go with it uh, and that's why I, I titled the album as a life with derpy but that kind of fell through i guess and that like i didn't that after great to be different i kind of didn't have anything else to write i think great to be different is one song that stands on its own as it is yeah. you know it's got an adorable album art <laughs> and that was done by a, a good friend of mine that i met through philly radio named uh Aklimovich. but yeah why does derpy appeal to me i <laughs> I mean, you and Starborn in particular. I mean, I know Starborn loves Derpy as well. Yeah. I I relate with Derpy. Um, I, I mean, like, I guess what I see in Derpy is that um, there's been a decent chunk of my life where I have been chastised for being who I am. But I, I mean, I love myself. I don't see anything particularly wrong with me. I mean, I, I know... In some cases, I'm not like everybody else. Um, but, you know, I, I imagine that Derpy and I could bond because we've been through a lot of the same things. And to a point where I guess it's kind of like, I don't know, I, I, I guess I think we would get along because it's like, um, this is really hard. <laughs> I, I No, I like I, I completely get what you're going, going for. And I think that's exactly why I identify with Derpy too. <laughs> the, the reason why we identify with Derpy is that she reminds us of ourselves. She's not like everybody else. She does her own thing. She's not afraid of being who she is or, you know, making a fool of herself by, by doing the things she wants to do. And for a lot of us, that's who we are. I mean, a lot being of a us... Brony? Yeah, like, just that? even being a brony in that, like, when we went through school or some of us are still in school, that... People will, like like Starborn said, chastise us for being who we are, having interests in what we have interests in. And part of identifying with Derpy or, or, or being Derpy is just saying, you know, screw them. I'm going to do exactly what I want to do and be exactly who I am. And nobody's going to you know, be able to tell me otherwise. And I don't care if I'm different and I don't care if people think I'm strange. I'm just going to do what I like to do. Actually, I think I'll ask you as well, Norman, but I'll go first on this. The reason why Derpy kind of appeals to me, actually, is what I see in her is 
that I have a bit of this kind of attitude where I just want to help, but I tend to screw things up in a sense. And you know, Dorothy is this really helpful, adorable pony who just wants to, to do her best to help everyone out. But sometimes she just falls a little bit short of that, and that's what appeals to me from her. Did you all ta- did you all see that as well? Like probably in yourselves. Yeah, no, for sure. That sounds that sounds completely legit. <laughs> exactly how I feel when I try and help Forrest with music. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. So Norman, now that you're here, I know you love Derpy as well. You selected her as the mascot for our show for so long. So what about Derpy that appeals to you? Because I asked everyone else already. I personally don't really know why I like Derpy so much. Um, I think it could be because she represents the Brony fandom. Like, we made her as... Um, how do I say? Um, we technically made her from a, just a normal background pony in episode 1 who has who technically did a funny face to an insane background story of how she was left in the woods and only left there to blow bubbles. Or oh, working with oh, the doctor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, th- there's a lot of stories behind her. I mean, the reason why I like her, um, I think it could be because of this one fanfic called um, Shipping and Handling. I think my love for Derpy sparked from that fanfic. But like I said before, um, the reason why I love her is because, well, we made her. She's ours. That's a great way to put it. So, how do you say, now we all have our own personal reasons for loving Derpy. And I always thought it was like the same thing. You know, everybody loved Derpy because she's cute, full stop, end of story. You know, at least now we know that there's, now we know there's so much more to it. And it's actually such a great story to hear from both of you that how... Derpy as a character played pretty much, uh, I think, could you agree with me on this, played a role in bringing you two together? Absolutely. You know, there's that fanfic called Shipping and Handling. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, this kind of relates to, to, to just kind of what I was saying earlier, is that, you know, the entire storyline or plot of Great to be Different is almost ironic in the sense that it almost became, you know, in a, in a way it became completely real. Um, and like, it's funny too, because somebody wrote a, a fanfic based off of Great to be Different, um, where, uh, Forrest at the beginning of the story was engaged to somebody named Shining Star, um, which I always thought was ironic chicks. because of Starborn, Shining Star, <laughs> that kind of thing. Oh, okay. And, uh, the sad thing is that in the fanfic, Shining Star died. <laughs> and Aww. then I like got into a relationship with Derpy, but... And in real life, I make it very clear that Starborn is my derby. <laughs> Awesomeness. Those were kind of serious topics and kind of thought-provoking. Let's dub it down. So, will you do a rock cover of one of your old songs? Like what? Well, um, I remember you saying that uh, Join the Herd pop vocals was kind of your deal when you tried to do the rock vocals. Like, uh, you didn't say it worked well? <laughs> yeah, the, the funny thing about that was um, uh, I did join the herd, and some people were saying that the vocals were too um, too poppy or, you know, too not, not hard enough or rough enough. Um, and then I tried to do rock version vocals, which is also on YouTube, and a lot of people say, oh, these are the exact same vocals. <laughs> But it's to actually be honest, a completely I different. Hear much of a difference. Yeah, it was, it's actually a completely different tra- take, and there's a couple different things that are a little bit, you know, that you can I can point out for it. But it, they're they're still pretty much the exact same. And even even now, my vocals are still pretty poppy. I mean, with stuff like "Raise the Sun," I've managed to like tap into different parts of my voice. But in all in all, I don't really have that kind of really rough alternative voice that some people are looking for. And I've just kind of accepted that. Yeah, it's true. I mean, no point in changing what you can't change, right? Like, if you can't do rock, don't do rock. If you do rock, people yeah. are going to criticize you for doing rock. Yeah. And, I mean, you're people, like Linky Park. Yeah. I mean, if people are looking for, for metal or, you know, a rougher voice, I'm just going to say, hey, go listen to Cyril. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Like, um, Cyril? Cyril does metal? Cyril Absolutely. the Wolf. I haven't heard his metal stuff before. Seriously? What have you heard from Cyril? <laughs> stuff he did for Bronies for Good. Which oh. is not really metal. Oh, 
love to make you smile. Yeah. <laughs> um, and also the <laughs> the one that he did with uh, Sprocket. Oh, uh, stand up tall. Right, that. Yeah. Okay. I can't uh, imagine I that voice doing metal. I can't imagine him doing metal. Like, if if you go on the Cyril's channel, the majority of it is metal. Yeah, that's what I thought. I I okay. thought Cyril did Can't metal. Imagine. Like uh, huh. <laughs> that. That's funny. I'm gonna have to tell him that that somebody knows him for his pop stuff instead of. You, you know what? You just link him to this uh, time and this moment so he can listen to it for himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll be good. Just send me along the time code for this show, and I'll always pass it along to him. Will do. <laughs> do you have prior music experience, like uh, music education and training? Oh yeah. Yeah, no, I um, I went through college for in, in a program called Recording Arts Technology, which um, I took at the International Academy of Design and Technology in uh, Toronto. And basically what this program encompasses is any kind of recording arts. So that includes everything from music production to uh, film post-production, location recording, live sound reinforcement, Foley, all that kind of stuff. So uh, I learned a lot about recording through that program. Um, and I actually did a lot of film work when I was uh, when I was in the program. But um, I, I I've been playing music since I was little, um, mostly piano, uh, guitar. I only got into recently. I'm still not that good at guitar. <laughs> good enough that I can play stuff for the songs so that it, it you know works out that way. But I'm not skilled at all, really, uh, in guitar. Right. Um, when it comes to any kind of you know special guitar stuff, I always get like. Cyril to help out or tur- Turquoise Flash and stuff like that. But yeah, no, I definitely did have a prior experience. Um, but oddly enough, before Ponies, I, I didn't really touch my keyboard or do any kind of music stuff for about a year. Um, and it was Ponies that got me back into it. Oh, so you didn't even do music at work? No, no, nothing like that. Um, like I said, I was working as a cable guy for the last couple of years. So you didn't have to do anything with, you know... Uh, writing jingles and bumpers and ramps and stuff. No, no, I've. Uh, I don't think I've ever actually done that stuff professionally. I've done um, voiceover work professionally. Um, I was a freelance uh, voiceover artist for a while, um, but I was never able to land a, land an agent, and uh, it just kind of got too much to to try and juggle with everything else. So I just settled for a real job in <laughs> Canada. You can't find a voice agent. Okay. Yeah, no, it's, um, the funny thing is that, like, if you're not in any of those particular areas, it's kind of hard to land an agent, so you just kind of send your CD out to people as much as you can and just kind of hope. But I was never able to land an agent, so I just did uh, all freelance stuff, which was all right. I did all right with that, but it's mm-hmm. um, way too much trying to land too much work for too few work, uh, too few work opportunities, that is. All right, awesome. Okay. So with the whole Bruni fandom looking for voice actors and whatnot have you tried looking over there to voice stuff i've looked at a couple things like i mostly stick to the the narrations that i do on my channel and i mean i put in a demo for equestria softworks they were doing um a a mod for fallout uh that would completely recreate fallout equestria um and they 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 brought me on just as like general talent they didn't have any kind of roles in mind specifically I, I don't even know if they're even doing the, uh, the the vocal side of stuff yet. But yeah, no, there's I haven't done a lot of character work for the fandom at all. Like I said, it's mostly restricted to just um, Narration? narrations that I'm doing on my channel. Okay, okay. I've done a bunch of, um, like I said, a bunch of community projects. And I've done a bunch of um, uh, like vocal um, assists so far as music. Oh, okay. Uh, talking about music, what do you use, um, or what do you have, or what do you use to record your music, like um, software your and hardware? Of choice. <laughs> uh, did you want specific software or specific hardware? Or? In general, what do you use, like um, bas- oh. basically a computer, and what do you use on that computer? Uh, I generally uh, record into Pro Tools 8, which I do that mainly because that's what I was taught in school. Um, I mean, there's better programs out there so far as getting VST instruments and, and stuff like that. That's that's a lot more accessible and a lot, um, you know, easier to use in that regard. But, um, yeah, like I said, Pro Tools 8 was kind of just bashed into my head while I was in college. So that's, that's what I use. Um, so far as uh, equipment, I use an AKG C2000B microphone. 
uh, that goes into a Focusrite Voice Master plat- uh, Voice Master Platinum preamp, um, which is awesome. The preamp is what makes um, the vocals sound so good. <laughs> yeah, so no wonder um, you sound so good right now. Yeah, the, 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 that's it's all the preamp. The preamp basically. You're, reco- you're recording with your rig right now. Yep. Yeah, uh, through right. Skype, it's it's going um, through my my mic and my preamp at the moment. But yeah, the preamp is what makes everything sound so good. It, it kind of has its own tone. Um, it completely clears out all room noise. Um, and it has its own like uh, dynamics and compression and stuff on it. And, you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, but yeah, and then mostly um, when I'm recording, the majority of my instruments actually come from a program called uh, Contact 3 which is a sampling program. So it has recorded samples of orchestral instruments and band instruments and stuff like that. So any of my drums, my bass, uh, pianos, all of that stuff come from that program. It's all just played through with a, with a MIDI keyboard. Oh. Um, the guitars that I record are all um, recorded with my own guitar. I use a PV Generation EXP with DiMarzio humbucker, preamp, uh, uh, humbucker uh, pickups on it. What um, keyboard do you use? The keyboard I have is actually um, uh, the same keyboard I've had for a while. <laughs> it's it's not meant as a MIDI controller, but it, it has the functionality. It's uh, a Yamaha DGX two hundred five. Well, if it ain't Yamaha, it's got to be something else. <laughs> I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I believe that Contact is actually a VST software that actually handles the VSTs. Uh, yeah, Contact is a, a sampling software. It um, you can. It, it comes in both like VST format and RTAS. And RTAS is um, the uh, type of plugin that uh, Pro Tools uses. Um, it stands for Real Time Audio Suite Plugins. RTAS. Okay, <laughs> I haven't tried that because the contact I used was Contact 2 and I used that with um, Finale. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's all the same kind of thing. Like everything with, uh, with any kind of uh, DAW, Digital Audio Workstation, DAW. Okay. Um, is is a type of plugin. So it's it, for most programs that are out there, it's VSTs. But um, Contact, or sorry, not Contact, uh, Pro Tools wants to be special and have its own kind of VSTs so that they can charge you more for it. Pretty much. Ain't that business? Well, Make Music yep. does the same thing. Yeah. Mm. And that's why I said there's there's easier programs out there that people can use. I mean, there's even like quote unquote free programs like uh, Reaper. Reaper is free to download. Um, they encourage you to purchase a license if you're using it a lot. But, I mean, it's free to download, so you can at least try it out. You can do your stuff. They don't give the program at all. True, true. Test it out, see if it's um, good or not. Yeah. So I was wondering, um, have you done any crossovers beside with Starborn? Uh, like collaborations? Mm, yeah. Uh, yeah, we actually, just for the uh, the album we were talking about earlier for uh, Cloudsdale Congress, uh, Party in the Clouds, uh, we collaborated on a track called Inspiration, um, which we both wrote because, you know, um, we're both... Uh, one of the things that I, I guess that I've said to Starborn a lot is that her purpose in life seems to be inspiring people, <laughs> um, which she definitely did with me with the letter and everything like that. And then there's a lot of other people that were inspired by those letters as well, but also just how she lives her life and the kinds of things she does are just in general really inspiring. So we decided to work on a track called Inspiration. Awesome. Um, Star, did you want to talk about that at all? Or? Yeah, please do. I, I want to know what went behind uh, inspiration. Not a lot, I guess. I, I mean... It's kind it, of just a fun thing that we both kind of like... Yeah, it, it was together. Um, it was my first real, like, full collaboration with Forrest, or I guess the first one I've ever done that I've actually been proud of. <laughs> oh, you did um, some of the good stuff. You did some of the good stuff. Well, I know. I mean... The only other thing that I've done that was like a full-on collaboration was Follow My Lead with Fire Envy, which was my first Pony song, and it's kind of... Eh. Well, it, everyone uh, has to start somewhere, right? <laughs> yeah. It kind of just drew from life experiences, really. Um, came from some long conversations with Forrest and... <laughs> late nights. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Late nights and lots of lyric writing and arguing. Well, not a lot of arguing, really, but just a lot of going over stuff. Difference of, difference of opinion in song and lyrics. That happens a lot. I understand. <laughs> so, 
So um, I was wondering, uh, besides Starbond, who else have you worked with, um, Forrest? Uh, quite a few people. <laughs> Depending on specifically if you mean just music or whatever, but um, I've worked um, worked with Turquoise Splash. Um, he was kind of like a fan that started doing a couple of covers of songs that, uh, of mine. And I kind of noticed him that way, and I said, "Hey, you're really good, so let's let's work on some stuff." And then I kind of introduced him to to P1K as well, and he was a big fan of uh, Pony One Kenobi P1K as well. Um, and they kind of started working together too. Um, quilts. Uh, I work with Cyril a lot, although we don't really do a lot of collaborations together. We can we sometimes like contribute uh, bits and pieces to each other's songs. Like he'll do uh, like backup vocals for me or like bass. Um, and I'll, I'll, a lot of the times you do backup vocals for him or just um, critique. Um, that's a big thing that uh, he and I do for each other is that whenever we're working on a song, when we're close to completion, we'll send it to each other uh, and the other person will basically rip the song apart as much as they can to, to say, you know, what all can be improved or changed or uh, fixed or re-recorded. A lesser man cannot handle true honesty. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're, we we become very honest with each other sometimes. It's great. Um, I remember him telling me at one point that one of my songs sounded like a crappy church gospel choir. And I'm like, well, that's great. <laughs> but I mean, there's also times where I told him, or like, hey, I want you to cut out the part where you smack your foot against your wheelie chair. And he's like, you hear that? Yep, I hear that. Oh, but my. yeah, um, stuff like that. Who else have I worked with? I worked with Pony One Kenobi a lot. Um, I've worked with Brony Dance Party for animation stuff. Uh, I've worked with the folks from um, that one game. The Belly. Sorry. Um, I'm looking at awesome people on your um, YouTube page. And- oh, Decibel. Yeah. yeah, Decibel is like in almost every song I can possibly put her in. Um, <laughs> Decibel is amazing. She um, originally sent me a track for the Massive Smile project. Um, and as soon as I heard the track that she submitted, I sent her back an email immediately. And the very first line of that email was, You, my dear, have the absolute most fantastic voice I have ever heard. And um, I, I guess I just kind of worked the charm that way and we became friends. <laughs> um, was she like voice acting for that? voice that she did with uh, Great To Be Different, or is that her real voice that sounds like Derby? Um, she actually did a character for that. Um, okay. So, yeah, it's her real voice in that she did it, um, but she did put on a character for Great To Be Different. She also did a Derpy voice, uh, like I put her in contact with a guy that was doing a, a Derpy game. Uh, his name was Marcin. Um, I think the game was called Derpy Story, hmm. um, and it was kind of like a, a point-and-click thing where you kind of like guided derpy around in um, um like the everfree forest or whatever and you had to avoid timber wolves and stuff um i the, the way that i knew about that game is that i was doing the uh the music for it um like the score um in between um in between the levels and stuff like that oh um awesome. and he's like yeah so i wanted to see if i could uh get a derpy and i'm like well i know a fantastic derpy uh, and I put him in contact with, with Decibel, and she did some voice work for that, too. Awesome. Um, yeah, so I've, I don't know, I've worked with a lot of people. Um, I don't even remember all the people that, that I've done stuff with. But, um, well, you mentioned something about um, working with, um, what's that one movie? I'm a bit derpy right now. Oh, um, Journey of the Spark. Yes, that one. How did you got involved in all? Uh, with Journey of the Spark, believe it or not, I was actually um, introduced to the director by Decibel. Um, <laughs> she's really good friends with the director. The director is uh, Eric... Uh, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce his last name. But his name's Eric anyway. Um, on Skype, he goes by Spitfire. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. um, but yeah, she put me in contact with him, and they were looking for a, a songwriter to work with for the, the, like the musical numbers within the movie. So, not to be confused with uh, the composers for the movie, because they do have a couple, uh, two or three composers that are working on it as well. And those guys are the, the ones that are doing, like, the score. And so all the, the, the incidental music in the background, uh, stuff like that. So a good example um, whereas, is your Daniel Ingram and the rest are William right. Anderson? That's right. Yeah. Oh, okay. So <laughs> I would be playing the Daniel Ingram for the movie. Um, 
Yeah, Morris Green so. is Daniel Ingram. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, that's, uh, I'm going to have to put in a stipulation in my contract that that's exactly how they should credit me. <laughs> Yay. Oh, continue on. Sorry, sorry for bothering you. Continue on. Um, but yeah, so I'm doing the, the songwriting for that, um, working closely with um, with a few of the, the voice actors that are doing singing parts. Some of them are helping with the writing for it, um, as well as Eric himself uh, is, is helping with the writing for it as well. So, And we we're actually just kind of starting that now. Uh, um, like oh. starting the the actual writing process for the songs, so it's we're kind of getting into an exciting um, an exciting part of working on the movie now. Awesome! I can't wait. Uh, when can we expect a teaser of one of the songs from the movies? Um, I think what they're gonna do is once we actually have the songs written, they're gonna they're gonna like uh, release a couple of tracks as as teasers. I'm not sure exactly what really. That's up to to Eric and his crew. Um, but I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that there's going to be that or an OST that comes out um, before the movie actually does. I know the movie's slated to come out around early 2014, I think. Oh, awesome. I can't so, wait. Like, steer? Yeah. Can't wait. Sounds awesome. Yeah. And from what I've read so far, the script's really solid. It looks like a really, really interesting movie. And hopefully there's no kind of issues with Hasbro for it. Mm, don't think so if it's a fan-made movie. If um, not, we shall go completely OC. Yeah. <laughs> Twilight Sparkle is playing the role of Midnight Twinkle. Midnight Twinkle, yep. Midnight <laughs> Twinkle on the search for the spark. <laughs> they can't use spark. They have the trademark spark oh, as well. Spark. Yeah. 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 Anybody Midnight can use Sparkle spark. Midnight search for the glowy the lens sparkle. flare. <laughs> it's a new J.J. Abrams movie. <laughs> oh, God, no. Every movie needs to have that blaring horn from Inception inserted there. <laughs> Yep. Let me see. How are we on time? So over time. Oh boy, we're already an hour and a half in. So um, I, I wasn't here for most of the questions, so I got no idea what Dan asked. I was basically asking them about you know their perception on why they like Derpy because. It's the first time we're having two guests on the show who can agree on who's best pony. No, three people on the show who can agree on who's best pony, you know? So, basically, it's something interesting. I really wanted to know what you like about Derpy that was so impressive about her. Now I understand. Uh, true indeed. Okay. Well, I'm trying to think of questions while Daniel stalls, and I have found one. Yes, awesome me. Master of stalling. <laughs> uh, I was going to stall for you, okay? Yeah. If you pointed it out, it's not great anymore. Oh. Anyway, first, um, when you cover most songs, um, how do you pick those songs? Uh, that's a good question. Um, a lot of the time, uh, I mean, like when I first started, I, I wasn't doing a lot of my own original stuff at all. And I mean, I still have issues with that because I'm not the greatest at writing stuff. I can write music all day long. I just can't write lyrics. You know, I, I call Poppycock on that. I call Poppycock on that because uh, Hey There, Miss Derpy is awesome. Yeah, but I didn't write Hey, the, hey There, Miss Derpy. I wrote, oh. like, maybe part of the chorus. Still awesome. Oh. <laughs> um, hey, there, Miss Derpy, awesome. hey There, Miss Derpy was written by a friend of mine named Axel Gunn, um, who I met on Rainbow Dash Network. Oh. And... Uh, um, yeah, he, he wrote the majority of it, and we just kind of collaborated on, on some parts. Yeah, so a lot of the time when it comes to, to covers, uh, what I do is uh, I listen to songs that I hear have great potential, but maybe aren't living up quite to exactly the like the grandeur that I think they could or to the, to the level that I think they could be brought to. And I mean, like, that's that's definitely what made me interested in uh, Memory Lane and Family Ways. Memory Lane in particular. Um, Memory Lane was uh, written by uh, Ozoth from the Beatles Bronies uh, as part of the Smile charity album that was released by uh, Bronies for Good. And when I first heard it, it's just this really, really simple guitar track. It's like one guitar and this guy singing. And then there's like a little bit of overdubbed vocals and him like tapping on his guitar for rhythm. That sounds and like Matthew Mosier. Yeah, kinda. It's, I love it's, Slow Mo. Yeah. 
Matthew oh, Mercer is great. <laughs> uh, he's he's actually um, he's another local DC brony. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, no, so it's really similar to Matthew Mosey in that in that sense. But, um, yeah, it was just this really simple track that was this really good song. And musically, it was really, really well done. Um, and the lyrics were really good. And I kind of wanted to, to take it and just bring it to a new level um, and, and kind of make it more... Well, to put it in a completely terrible sense, I wanted to make it as if the original artist sold out. <laughs> That's pretty much like that's that's what my music is. It's like my music is what music would sound like if somebody sold out. Except not really because I'm not getting paid millions of dollars by some company to do it. Uh, I, I can. I think I, I know what you're trying to say, but it's kind of a send <laughs> like on yourself, fun. man. Yeah, it's something that reaches a wider audience than what the original would. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what I what I strive to do. I, um, I don't know. How same to... thing with Family Ways. Like Family Ways was sort of this kind of like electro 80s kind of deal in the original which i really loved it's really great it's cool i love it but i mean like the vocals were really quiet and there was a couple you know technical aspects about it but i'm like hey i can take this and i can switch it around put it in my own style and it'll sound pretty good i like your uh, family way seriously yeah. uh, your version was awesome oh, thank you yeah i i get what you're trying to say like um you play music that how people will sell out sound like but it's not so bad <laughs> I get I get what you're trying to say, but it's also bad, and it's not. It's not. <laughs> that's the thing, right? It's it's pop music, so I mm. produce my stuff in a way that's very pop. But I I don't think there's a better way to put it, really. Yeah, I can um, understand. I understand. I mean, some people like certain genres, and some people let's just say that some if somebody were to cover a Linkin Park song with poppy tunes, eh. Uh, I don't see it happening, but if somebody did it and they were successful, awesome them. Yeah. Yeah, I can understand, I can understand. So, oh, besides pop, what else can you do? Uh, I do orchestral stuff, alternative stuff. Like, it's, it's really pop is really what I stick to the most, because um, that's where I got the most of my influences from. Mm. Um, like, when I was younger, I was always into Elton John. I was into stuff like Celine Dion. Um, Japanese pop music, J-pop. I was really into J-pop for a good long time. Uh, uh, I was into whining emo music from <laughs> the states. Uh, so yeah, no, the, the, like like I said, that's the majority of my influence. So, um, oh, another big influence that I had too is uh, Nobuo Uematsu. Well, that was interesting. So, Dan, you have any questions? Well, I asked pretty much everything there is, but um, there are just a few more. Have any of you been to Malaysia? Nope. Planning to? Maybe. Not in the, for- not in the foreseeable future, but possibly. Okay, because that's, that's what I've been meaning to ask. <laughs> so, thank you, Dan, for that last question. That was really interesting. You're welcome. <laughs> so, anyway, those are my questions, and those were Dan's questions, and Starbone loves Forrest. That's awesome. <laughs> Yay! So, uh, and if- happily ever after. Yeah, okay. True. Um, if nobody else has any questions, we can move on. Nobody? Well, nobody? do you have any questions for us, Forrest? Uh, <laughs> um, not really. Are you guys planning to, to frequent any kind of conventions that are in the area or uh, any kind of conventions overseas? We're planning the to. The only convention, the nearest one was in the Philippines and it happened last week and we couldn't make it. Oh. The next one is in Australia and we can't afford it. Oh. Uh, basically, and, we're uh, in a stri- we're we're not in a strategic position to go to any cons because we suck, and this show is getting derpy. <laughs> <laughs> right. We need to buy. A, I need to buy myself a hot air balloon and take myself to you know Cowsdale <laughs> Congress. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. If I leave, if I leave now, I might make it. <laughs> <laughs> I really have a month, so yep. <laughs> Just hot air balloon over the sea. That could work. <laughs> the ceremony will be is Twilight Sparkles Balloon. <laughs> <laughs> Pops up, Daniel. Everybody's disappointed. <laughs> and then it lands, they're just like, no, it's just some Malaysian kid, whatever. Uh, <laughs> okay, anyway, um, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is shout outs. And my shout out goes to you, Forrest, and to you, Starborn. Thank you for coming on to the show and um, tolerating us. <laughs> 
No problem. Uh, Daniel, any any for you? Yeah, I have a shout out to everyone on this show right now because of how much tolerance y'all have showed me throughout these episodes. Like, I know I've been totally on and off and on and off because when Norman, as when I told Norman, I may not be able to make it today. I'm decorating for someone, but we have forest rain on. Okay, change of plan. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happened. That's exactly what happened. You know, I was like, "You had forest rain on. Come on." Well, I appreciate it. You're awesome. Glad you do. Glad you do. So, Rebecca, any shoutouts from you? I well, to you guys, of course. Thank but, you. You know, because this is you know what, like my third or fourth time on your show. Well, uh, thank and you. I, I enjoy, well, I mean, if you count like the uh, the crossover with Brony time. Yeah, that will be a third oh, time. Okay. Third time. Third time now. <laughs> okay. Well, you know. Even still... Wait. Yeah, okay. Right. <laughs> I, like, man. There's so much CloudCon stuff going on, I can't keep my own head straight. Not that I keep it straight any other time in the Would year. you say that your heads are in the clouds? Giggity. <laughs> 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 uh, and and uh, I'll give one to Forrest Rain since he's my special sun pony. Oh, that is sweet. And the oh, two sea Because I love all them, too. It's just different. <laughs> Speaking of which, Hearts and Hoof Day is coming right up. We're mm. making cupcakes. Yay. Let's just hope it's the good ones. <laughs> They're going to have a, a dash of special ingredients. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess as long as it makes them taste better, that, that'll be okay. <laughs> going to have the fastest hat in Equestria. Oh boy! <laughs> uh, that is so funny and creepy at the same time. <laughs> By the way, it is Forest. Do you own like a company or something? Because I see you're, you're always using Forest Rain Media. Are you like your own company? Uh, not, not technically. It's just kind of like a thing. Um, the reason why I put media instead of like Forest Rain's music or whatever is because you know I did um, uh, voiceover stuff uh, and narrations. And, uh, you know, a bunch of other stuff other than just music. So that, that's kind of why I put media. So basically, uh, you okay. can cover the whole gambit then? Yeah. Oh, awesome. And you, Forrest, who would you like to give a shout-out to? Well, first and foremost, a uh, shout-out to Rebecca for uh, helping me. Uh, or, uh, <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first and foremost, shout out to Rebecca for uh, introducing me to you guys and, and landing me a spot on your show. That's awesome. Oh, uh, also, because she's my special sun pony and I love her to death. Um, mm-hmm. Shout out to you guys for you know bringing me on the show. But also, shout out to Brony Dance Party because he is currently working on an animation for Great to be Different. Oh, awesome. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Yeah, he just started on uh, like the 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 rig sport yesterday, I think. Oh, awesome! Can't oh, wait. So did, uh, an animated forest rain. Yeah, other than like the massive smile project <laughs> where you saw me for like two seconds. <laughs> I was about to ask about that, but hey, now I know. <laughs> yep. Huh. Brony dance party. Yeah, so yeah. Well, I guess those are the shoutouts. So, Forrest, where can they find you online? Uh, Everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Uh, uh, let me look at the show doc so I can say exactly what you wrote down. Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Tumblr? Yeah, sure. That sounds good. Um, yeah, so you can find me on uh, YouTube just by searching Forest Rain if you wanted to. Um, my actual username on YouTube is put trust in fate, all one word. You can also find me on Twitter under Forest Rain Media. Coincidentally, that's also my Skype if you wanted to add me there. Uh, you can also find me on Tumblr, forestrain.tumblr.com, uh, as well as on Facebook. And um, usually, if, if you want to find most of those, if you find my channel on YouTube, it has links to all of those. So you can just kind of put them there. Yeah, and I'll put it in the show notes so people can easily look for you there. Unless yes, that is correctly. <laughs> yeah, that say? looks good too. Or that would work well too. Yeah. And just uh, your YouTube, is that? Bef- did you make that account before your Bernie days? I did, yeah. Um, I've had that account for a while, actually. Um, so you're just sitting on and, it? Sorry? So you were just sitting on the, that account for a while? Yeah, I had like a total of one video on there, uh, which was actually like a time-lapse video from when I moved from uh, Teeswater, Ontario to Victoria, BC. Oh. Um, okay. So I did like a time-lapse of my drive, which, like I said, was about a week. Oh, my. Earlier. 
Well, yeah. one week's drive. Yeah, big country. <laughs> oh, well, like, uh, Norman and I stayed three hours apart, and that's a big drive for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, to put it in perspective, when I go to visit Starborn, it takes nine hours <laughs> driving. <laughs> well, that's not far for love. <laughs> Yeah, it's alright. We both well, we both enjoy true. driving, though, so it kind of works out. Mm, true. What is love? Maybe don't hurt me. Maybe <laughs> don't hurt me. Yeah, I was hoping for someone to say it. No, it's there. <laughs> yeah, I travel to visit Norman out of the love for the show. <laughs> uh, so anyway, let's move on before we go all stir crazy. <laughs> so if you have any questions, concerns, or any. Good suggestions for the show, or you just want to talk to us, you can contact us at mbsshow at gmail.com. And then, emails? Yes, if you would like to contact us personally about anything, especially about our upcoming meetup, you can reach me at daniel at the mbsshow.com and norman at norman at the mbsshow.com. So, anyway, uh, you can also reach us on Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show, and I'm at Norman Sanzo. I'm at St. Pinky, S-T-P-I-N-K-I-E. Rebecca, you have Twitter? Of course. I am at R Starborn. R Starborn. Okay, cool. And what about you, Forrest? Twitter? Yeah, I do, actually. I think it's at Forest Rain Media. Awesome. What could they expect from you if they follow you on Twitter? Yeah, uh, I actually don't go on Twitter that much. Uh, Twitter is mostly just like an echo for my uh, Tumblr. Oh. Um, and, uh, and and my YouTube. My YouTube's linked into it as well. So anytime I post a new video, it shows up on Twitter. Anytime I make a Tumblr post, it shows up on Twitter. Um, I usually try to get on at least like once a month to respond to personal messages on Twitter, but I mostly respond with like Skype or YouTube or uh, whatever. So okay. what's the best way to reach you? Uh, best way to reach me is usually through my YouTube account or through Skype. Okay. Or Tumblr. Tumblr works too. I do have an Ask box. Okay, awesome. So... Well, those are all the Twitters from everybody here on the show. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes. And also, like our Facebook page. And don't forget to like Rebecca's Facebook page and also Forest Rain's Facebook page. They're awesome. They need the love. <laughs> and, I'll... and all those things can be found in our show notes. Yes, I- I'll add them in later. <laughs> I'm a bit lazy now. Uh, that's what you do when you work on a holiday. You get lazy. <laughs> So anyway, um, I've been Norman Sanzo. I've been Daniel Anthony, Rebecca Starborn, and Forrest Rain. And we'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye. Good night. Good night.
links can be found in the show notes as well as a picture of Daniel Ingram's little snippet from his resume. Yes, we stole his resume. <laughs> oh. Speaking of resumes. <laughs> oh, oh boy. is that what the segue is? Totes. Okay. Okay. Uh, we were talking just before the show. We were uh, comparing like interesting job postings and like resumes and stuff. And uh, one of the things that um, helped Starborn land her current job uh, as a member of a top secret organization within the United States government. You can't say that on the radio. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, radio. Bleep I'll bleep it out. I bleep it out. One of the things that le- that uh, helped Starborn land her current job was that on her resume she put a gigantic picture comparatively of rainbow dash what right on the resume (laughs) and like one of the first lines within her resume was like hi my name is rebecca starborn i have a lip ring and rainbow hair so if that doesn't fit your clients whatever (laughs) pass me over i don't know exactly how it was worded my resume yeah needless to say i was very impressed (laughs) <laughs> Rebecca, you have the most awesome resume ever. I, I'm actually, I'm trying to find a picture of it. I know I have one. Like, it is on Facebook. I know, but I don't know like where it is. I, I'll link it in the show notes. I'll link it in the show notes. I uh, will find it. But before we move on to uh, 26 episodes of season 4, Starboard, how? Why? What? what? Resume? Got... How? Oh. <laughs> Like, they accepted it? No questions asked? Like... Um, yeah, I mean, I got an interview. I showed up to my interview in, like, jeans and a t-shirt. I was like, hi, guys. Oh, Is oh. Is content unavailable? Uh, uh, probably if you don't have her added onto Facebook, you won't be able to see it. Well, uh, yeah, I was gonna say. Oh wait, this is not my account. Oh, <laughs> no problem. I'll do. I'll do just the uh, image URL then. Oh, thanks. I, I'm looking at it and oh my, uh, it's <laughs> it's bold bold letters for hi Rebecca. It's in bold and uh, I have to say, awesome. <laughs> but uh, but one thing is a lie in this resume. Um, what's that? With rainbow hair, that's a lie. <laughs> She has well, hair. It, it wasn't a lie at the time. <laughs> um, I I currently have Twilight Sparkle hair. Oh my gosh! Can we see? Uh, uh sure. Just look in the. Sh- <laughs> just look at her Facebook. Let me grab another picture. I will find a picture. Uh, <laughs> Actually, one that I took like just this weekend, last weekend, the weekend before last weekend. Okay. Anyway, uh, resume awesome. Twilight Sparkle hair awesome. Let's talk about 26 episodes of season 4. <laughs> uh, we didn't even touch that one, man. Um, oh, another big influence that I had too is uh, Nobuo Uematsu. Um, yeah, Final Fantasy? Who's... Sorry? Uh, Final Fantasy composer, right? Yeah, the composer for pretty much every single Final Fantasy up to nine. Twelve. Uh, ten, oh. yeah, ten, eleven, I thought twelve. somebody else did like eleven or something. I don't yeah, know, uh, ten, eleven, twelve was not him. The last one is nine. And if I remember yeah, right, 11, he started... Eleven was the terrible online one anyway. Oh, God, no. Yeah. And twelve was the one that is confused to be an online game, but not. Huh. Huh. Oh, God. Yeah, I... I don't think I've... I, I tried playing Final Fantasy X, and I just couldn't deal with it. Oh, trust me, you missed nothing. If you really want to look at a review, I would recommend you looking at The Spoonie Experiment or Noah and Twilight. Dot, his username is Noah and Twilight, and he did a good review of Final Fantasy X. And let's just say that I agree with him. Ten, mm. mm, you suck. I like Ten. I do. I, I perfect 10 without any Game Shark codes. But the story about 10 just sucks because the 10 story is, um, Titus says, it's my story. But actually, it's about Yuna's story. Well, yeah. yeah, I just, I couldn't stand half the characters in Final Fantasy 10. It's the same reason I can't play um, um, that other game that everybody loves Kingdom Hearts. Oh. Yeah. I just can't stand the characters. Uh, It's been a while. Uh, If I were to defend it, it will be from memory, but 
Yeah. It was okay. It was okay. <laughs> uh, well, how do we how do we sidetrack to Final Fantasy and gaming? There's no really rules. Easy. Matsu rules. Uh, yeah. yeah, he rules. Oh, I, I just love his. You can cut it out if you want. It doesn't matter to me. Is we'll we'll give you more than enough material. Yep, <laughs> it could be in the bloopers. <sighs> oh, I just love the battle team for eight. That's just awesome. Eight, eight is my favorite Final Fantasy. I bought the soundtrack and poster, and yeah, I was only what? Because you haven't played Final Fantasy six. <laughs> Someday you will. Uh huh. And then you will love it. Isn't yeah. there a pony mod for six? Is there? I think so. Well, if there is, I don't I want to play six. instead. <laughs> no! 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 My bad. Oh, no! No! Play the original six. <laughs> then play the pony mod. Play the pony mod of six. My bad. Six. I'm sorry. <laughs> don't you dare not play the original six. I will shank you. Anyway. Okay, uh, let's just move on. <laughs> uh, three, two, one.